Welcome to the Storycraft Society. This week we're going to be making some ruined houses for our Ruins of Thunder Tree set. I know, I know. We've been making a lot of ruins on the channel lately. It's what the adventure calls for. I, I don't know what to tell you. Is that, is that fine? I guess not. Here we are, another Thursday, and we are back on the channel. My name is Garmin, this is Connor, and we are the Storycraft Society. Um, this week... <laughs> Last week we started our Ruins of Thunder Tree set, where we actually worked on the statue from Area 10. And this week we're gonna be working on ruined houses. Now, this week I took some time, and I actually made the entire set of houses that I'm gonna need, except for one, which is what I'm gonna show you today. The one thing that I will say is that a bunch of the buildings in the Ruin of Thunder Tree set are more completed, finished buildings. I'm actually gonna use my dungeon tiles from the Red Brand Hideout video to do those buildings. That way I'll be able to use doors and kind of hide them and mask them so you can't see exactly what's going on inside. Enough jibber jabber, let's get into making a ruined house. Let's go. All right, so we're starting with our masonite base here. I just cut this out to shape and then sanded down the edges so that it gave us a nice smooth surface to rest on our table. And then the next thing that I did was I used a template. Now I have two. One of them is showing me what the outside walls is going to look like. And one of them is just the inside floor space. Obviously you see that it lines up there. And I traced that out onto the masonite so that it would give me a good reference when I'm placing my foundation bricks. The next thing that we need to do is decide where all the features and stuff of this this house are going to be and I have two things that I'm gonna add one there's gonna be steps right here that go up and into the building and then over here I'm gonna do a small I guess it would be like cellar it's one of those angled things that you know opens like this and goes down in to a lower level so we're gonna do that over here we're gonna do the steps over here there's nothing else to say about this other than jumping into it and starting to lay down some bricks so we're gonna be using two different types of bricks slash blocks one of them is actually the size bricks that we used for the dungeon tile video. I just cut up a whole bunch more. The other is the blocks that we used for the Agatha's Lair watchtower as well as the old Al Well watchtower. And what we're going to do is not use these as the blocks for the sides of the ruin here. But we're going to use it as the foundation that's going to run around the outside to give us a bigger looking stone. So let's start gluing some stuff down. Okay, so now that we have the back end here, the next plan is figuring out what we're going to do for the floorboards. So we know that this is gonna set up in here like this. And then what I'm thinking is that maybe, you know, th this was the herbalist's shop up here. And then down here was kind of like the family area where they're all the like living quarters were. Down here, it's gonna be a little lower. And this area is gonna set up a little higher. And then there's gonna be kind of maybe just a single step down into this lower area. It'll give the building some like dynamic range to it. And also it'll allow me to build this staircase up out here. So then what I need is I need to cut this rectangle here so that it fits down in. I'm gonna run a couple of bricks along here and that will tell me where this can go. So next is running some bricks down along here just to give me a kind of a guide as to where this will set in. And then I'm gonna cut this rectangle out, not this one, but this one. And then I will lay that down to be my basic floorboards. So those are next. So to do the floorboards for the lower section, we're gonna be using dollar store foam core. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of trace this using my inner template out. Again, nothing fancy here. Trace this line out here. And then we're gonna take our X-Acto and start cutting away at it. Actually, I might grab a ruler. And then we will peel the paper off and then grab our ruler here and start cutting our floorboards. So the way that I'm gonna do this is just mark out half inch strips and just score those the whole way across, trying not to go all the way down through the foam core, but just enough that it gets me a nice indent. Then you take a pencil, or open the lines like that. Take the edges off the outside of your planks as well. 
And then take your X-Acto and go in and start cutting the floorboards the other direction. Nail holes. Plastic wire brush to make our wood grain. And then this will sit down in just like that. Lower floor, ready to be glued down. Next is making this upper floor here. All right, so for this, I pulled out a little just scrap piece of foam that I had, and now we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. So we'll go like this, all right. Then we're gonna do that same exact thing that we did before. All right. So now that that's done, we are ready to cue the time lapse of me putting in the rest of all these bricks. Okay, so with all the blocks done around the foundation, now the only thing left for us to do to get that done is uh, we need to do the cellar door. So what I did was cut a piece of XPS to be the same thickness as the foundation blocks. And now what I'm gonna do is mark that out so I know how big it needs to be here. Now I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut this out. So now I have my piece here that fits in like that. Now what we're gonna do is get that carved up so it looks like block and a cellar door. All right, so now that we have our cellar door done, well, it's not all the way done because we're gonna have to glue some kind of like handles or something of that sort of nature on the front to finish it up. But the general idea of our cellar doors are done. So now it is time to put them into place and glue them down. And then we're moving on to finishing up doing the bricks of the walls. Let's go. All right, so actually I think I changed my mind. What I decided that I want to do uh, is do the ground texture on here because I can be working on the bricks while the ground texture is drying. I'm gonna use sand again. And so all I'm gonna do is just put down a layer of PVA glue on here and then sprinkle sand all over it and then let that dry. So here is how we are looking now that we have the first full layer of brick down. Obviously the first layer had foundation block uh, that we had to lay down, but now it's just pure brick. Not a whole lot to say here other than now I just got to keep on keeping on to get all these bricks down. I am going to put windows in maybe here. Maybe I'll put one back here or kind of off to the side here. And the way that I'm going to put those windows in is just by using small strips of XPS made to look like wood window sills that I'm just going to glue in on top of the bricks but the next thing that you will see is when I've got this thing all the way done so ready three two one so here we are at the finished product or I guess the finished sculpt I took my time and made sure to get all of the bricks it's kind of sitting in natural looking places I did make a conscious effort to do two things one make sure that all of the open area is open this isn't a display piece, it's for playing Dungeons and Dragons. So I need space in here for miniatures, uh, for battles to happen and that sort of thing. So that's really important. The next thing is these crumbling bricks look really great. However, they make it hard for miniatures to stand on. So I made sure to give a couple of clear flat areas 
where even up on the walls of the ruins, players could stand. An example that I always use as the rogue in the party is always gonna wanna run and jump up on top of things and leap over the bad guys and land behind them and whatever. So that's definitely something that you want to give your players the opportunity to do in a build like this. So uh, the last thing that I guess is of note is when I did the windows, I made them go two bricks high. There's no specific reason for that other than the fact that I just took a miniature and placed them at the window and then decided where a good window height for the miniature would be. This might be right, it might be wrong, but I think it looks good and that's all that matters to me. The next step is getting this bad boy Mod Podged up. Then it's time for paint. So let's get her done. I really just said get her done. Ew. The undercoat that we're gonna be using is the Black Magic Craft base coat. So this is a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint and Mod Podge that was popularized by Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. So we're definitely going to be taking this and putting this all over the piece to strengthen up the foam and give us our black undercoat. All right, so we aren't doing anything fancy with our paint job on this. In fact, it's all gonna be real simple. Now for the wood, I really want this to look old and aged. So I'm gonna be going with a more gray palette for the wood. Uh, and this is actually another thing that I stole from Jeremy at Black Magic Craft. So you take a honey brown, water it way down, put that onto the woodwork, then dry brush it with a medium gray. And then after you dry brush it with a medium gray, you hit it with a tan. You hit it with a tan, and what that does is that makes it look old and aged instead of looking like a brown, kind of fresh, uh, more supple wood. I'm gonna fly through the painting process because it's nothing new that you haven't seen in a video before. So, paint, then we're gonna start decorating the piece up. So just a quick tip for painting while this brown is drying here for me. I really don't enjoy the painting process, but something that helped me to enjoy the painting process more is I realized that you don't have to be careful, you know, painting in the lines until you get to a certain point. So for example, with this dark brown, I just slapped it on. I'm gonna do the same thing with the medium brown and the same thing with the highlight. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna be going over all the other blocks and that sort of thing with my grays. So it doesn't do me any good to try and worry about being neat and tidy now. I can be neat and tidy later and clean up all those mistakes. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of headache of sitting through the entire painting process being very diligent about being neat all the time. So that's it for this week's video. Hopefully you're enjoying the build so far. I'm really excited because we only have one more week left and that's where we're gonna be building the ruined tower where the green dragon stays. 
I am very excited. I think that's gonna be a super fun build. But other than that, if you like this content, definitely leave me a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to know when our videos go live every week, which is Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. Leave me a comment down below. Do you like more static ruins like this or would you rather have a modular ruin like a dungeon tile? I go back and forth. Sometimes I really like having the stationary ruins like this, but sometimes I like having a more modular system as well. But that's it for this week. Until next week, I'll be seeing you. Actually, I guess we'll be seeing you, right? Ignoring me again? Nice.